This documentary tells the story of one young boy, Charlie Anderson, and his journey to compete at the highest level of gymnastics for nine-year-old boys. It tells the story of his hard work and dedication, the tears and the triumph, the successes and failures, to be able to go up and reach his potential and go all the way and compete alongside the best young gymnasts in the country. Our journey begins here. This is the Anderson home on the outskirts of Dunfermline. It is Saturday 20th of September 2015 and today is the Scottish Gymnastics Grade Competition. Charlie Anderson, a young g gymnast with the Carnegie Spartans, will be competing amongst the top gymnasts in Scotland. We'll leave it to Mum to describe the events of that morning. So the morning of the Scottish competition, I would say, was a fairly relaxed morning for Charlie. Um, at different times, Charlie's had maybe a wee bit of nerves at some of his competitions, but this morning did feel different. Even from when he woke up, he was just laughing and singing and dancing, came jumping down the stairs and was uh, singing, singing... Um, shut up and dance with me. Um, in the car he was really happy. We we were all really quite happy um, just looking forward to having a nice morning together. So how would Charlie's new laid back singing and dancing attitude help him in the competition? Would it make him better or would it mean he would lose focus and make mistakes? We take a look back at the highlights of the Scottish Championship. <laughs> performance by young Charlie and the Carnegie Spartans team. This meant they came away with the level 1 team bronze. Charlie's mum and dad now describe the events following the competition. So it wasn't until, wasn't even on the Monday that we found out the competition because you didn't bother going to <laughs> gymnastics on Monday did you? Let me explain. So <laughs> Charlie had um, 
not not being thrilled about gymnastics training for quite a, quite a while pri- prior to the competition. And so it had been quite difficult to get him there. And so we'd, um, he asked to stay off that Monday. And because he'd done so well in the competition, then I agreed, OK, have a rest. And I cut home on Monday and you were just like laying on the sofa. I'm like, what's going on? Where's, where's gymnastics? And you get back working. And he's like, oh, just getting the day off. And I'm like, fine. Whatever. And it was, we didn't know the results at that point. Um, and I think it was either the Tuesday or the Wednesday, I checked online at work and the results were up. And it was really sort of good news because it was like Charlie had come sixth overall in Scotland. And uh, he had become the highest gymnast from the Spartans. And that had been the first time, that I think, that had happened in a big competition. Um, and so it was great. And so I think we kind of went to gymnastics a bit later on the Thursday, or I did, uh, to meet Charlie and sort of be with the, the coaches in a bit. Uh, and he was kind of swaggered in, the whole proud dad. Uh, and I talked to one of the mums, and she's like, have, have they told you that yet? And I'm like, told me what? And he was like, Charlie's qualified for the British. I was like, no, no, he hasn't. That, that wouldn't be right. Uh, and sure enough, uh, the coach came down later and was like, oh, I've got something for you. And she passed me this letter, which I have here. That just basically sort of was a letter to Charlie saying that he qualified uh, for the Scottish region uh, to compete, and that you know was which for us I think was just a complete shock because we no way did we even go to that competition even well for me I didn't even know it was a possibility actually no, I, <laughs> I, didn't. I mean I may have been aware but I, didn't, I wasn't thinking about it so it wasn't it wasn't on our radar certainly so wasn't it was a it. real happy happy yeah. surprise of like wow like that is you know what and, and so I didn't I didn't tell him during gymnastics that night just so all the other boys were around and uh, so but just as he was going away uh, just as he was leaving the coach was talking to him he was like, and I hear you're going to British Charlie and Charlie's like what <laughs> and he didn't realise that I hadn't told him um and so as I told him the car, he's like, oh, he's totally excited. And what was it like when he came home? Yeah, he was just came in really excited. It was just a really happy moment. I, like, we just couldn't believe it. Just shared that kind of, wow, that's mm-hmm. amazing. However, there was a slight uh, hesitancy because the letter had said that you needed to tell them within like a day or two. By so, Monday. By <laughs> Monday. And obviously <laughs> because we weren't there on Monday, we hadn't. So we did pull back and feel like we had to say to Charlie, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll hope we'll try but it's not definite yet because we, we didn't like we, we thought maybe you've blown it because <laughs> so, we hadn't gone and then so once we had it confirmed we got it confirmed I think by the weekend or by the Monday next Monday that everything was all fine that he'd be heading down to Birmingham it was kind of where the hard work began and um, so at that point he was only doing uh, I think six hours of training a week and uh, so the first thing we asked the coach is if he could do a little bit more and so they were quite okay with him staying for the full extra uh, for a full extra hour so I was putting him up to nine so it was kind of from that point on it just came all about hard work and I- so it was really important that we got the training right uh, to get ready for the British grades final we thought that we had to think of really some really unusual training regimes that no other gymnast was thinking about and we thought we think we came up with a fair few here is a list of our top five
So, with Charlie's unusual training techniques, they had varying degrees of success. So some were better than others, but what he did do very well was he worked super hard in the gym. So he had 9 to 11 hours every week um, in the gym and he worked his little socks off. So I think we had, it's a good opportunity to have a look at what he did in the gym in those six weeks. Oh, don't you dare look back, just keep your eyes on me I said you're holding back, she said shut up and dance with me This woman is my destiny, she said working really really hard um, Charlie was excited about a lot of things to do with the competition he was really excited because he was getting to go away to Birmingham for three nights and we were getting to uh, stay in a hotel which he was dead keen about he kind of felt like it was a bit of a holiday um, and one thing he was actually really excited about and he asked me about almost every single day was when he would get his Scottish 
outfit, the Scottish leotard and shorts and whatever else we're going to give. Uh, and it got to the point where I started phoning them up all the time and saying, oh, have you got the equipment yet? Got this, have you got the stuff yet? Um, and eventually, I think it was the Monday before the competition, uh, they provided me the Scottish bag uh, and outfit along with the Saltire leotard that he was to get. Uh, and I can show you, uh, I filmed him uh, being able to see it for the first time. Okay. And didn't he look good? Well, as the week of the competition uh, progressed, uh, Charlie got lots of good luck wishes from uh, many of the people who knew, many of the people who had followed his progress. So first of all, uh, he got a special mention at his team training. Um, some of his fellow gymnasts and their parents uh, wished him good luck. But perhaps the most unusual good luck message uh, was that that came from his uh, grand and grandpa um, and I will let you see uh, this good luck message along with Charlie's reaction to it. Thank <laughs> you. 
So eventually the morning of the competition arrived. Um, now you would expect normally that most nine year old boys about to undertake a big competition like this would be very nervous. Um, however we can have a look at how Charlie uh, dealt with his nerves on the morning of the competition. A big warm welcome to all our viewers. Today we find ourselves in Birmingham for the British Men Gymnastics Finals. There has been incredible interest in this competition, mainly due to the gymnast wearing 109, Charlie Anderson. We now join the action as the gymnasts enter the arena. And here comes the Scottish team, with young Charlie Anderson coming out third, looking incredibly focused. First event for the Scottish team will be the pommel mushroom. Now this is Charlie's toughest piece. He has never actually had more than one rotation in any competition pre previous to this. However, I know that he's been working hard on it and he's hoping for something special at this competition. His coaches look on as the judges make him wait what feels an absolute age while they score the previous gymnast. The judges give him the green light. He steps forward, spins a single. Oh, a double! He's made it! And another one, please, come on! 
Yes! And then he has five rotations and three, two doubles. Well done, Charlie. He looks pleased with that. We now move straight into our second rotation, the rings. The coach puts him into place. Yes, Charlie ha just hangs there. And he's ready. Brings his legs up and over into German hang. He holds it there. So he comes back and pushes out into swing. Backward. And again, good shape. And ready for the dismount. Give up, tuck. A slight wobble on dismount. But he should be pleased with that. Good job, Charlie. The coach looks happy too. We now head over to the vault for our third rotation. Now keep watch here, blink and you might miss it. Charlie will be going first for Scotland. Unfortunately, our cameras are not in a good position. Here he goes. Hits the springboard up and over. Nice landing. Not much wrong with that. Well done, Charlie. I think we can see that one again in super slow motion. The next rotation will be the parallel bars. Apologise for the big head in the way there. So that's one dip. Well, by half lever held, pushed out into swings, forward, back. Oh, that's a high one. And again, up. Now to the dismount. Nice landing. Our next rotation will be the high bar. There's a jug. Uh, Charlie's coach just puts him in place, makes him sure he's comfortable. And here he goes. So it's two leg lifts, the first one. Very controlled, and the second one makes it look easy. Head up to pull up, chin up, brings his leg up and circle over. Now this is the difficult one. He falls back into an undershoot. Three swings, getting progressively higher. That's a nice shape, nice and high on the back. And that's his high routine over. Well done, Charlie. Good job. The second last rotation will be the PPP routine. Charlie goes to the judges. This first part of this is the body shapers. He takes the stick and pushes out his body. The judges are really looking for good form here. He bends over and brings the stick back over his head. That was good, Charlie. Well done. And now we'll go into a nice high leg, up into handstand, which he holds for two seconds, <coughs> down into a roll, the Japana, which he pushes through. Now do his dish, arch dish, with rolls. He bring, now he'll bring his legs and his arms together and push up into bridge, hold that for two seconds. Nice straight legs, that's good. He brings his leg up and rolls over. He brings his hands to his heels. And he'll push himself forward, trying to push himself into a bent hamstring. And should just get his chin off the ground. And he's up. Notes to the judges. Well done, Charlie, that was a good routine. Our next rotation will be the floor. Charlie stands up. Into a double cat wheel. Into a full handstand. <laughs> Understand that we've had some uh, TV signaling problems, so I would like to apologise to all our viewers. To make it up to all the Charlie for Anderson fans out there, we'd like to show you his Scottish grades routine uh, from earlier in the year. Two hands up, nice high leg, into double cartwheel, forward handstand, to tuck up. Nicely done, Charlie. We'll go straight into 
Swedish fall. Sorry, our camera's missed that here too. Into splits. Arms out, holding it for two seconds. The seated position. Backward roll, straight arms. A little wobble. He comes now into arabesque, which is part, part, probably the trickiest part of it. He holds it, gets that back leg nice and high, kicks up and the other way into dive forward roll. Well done, Charlie. That looks great. If you smell what the rock is cooking. So once the competition was finished, uh, it was nice to get Charlie back again uh, and see him. Um, how was he, would you say? I think he was a little bit disappointed in one of one of his elements, um, and, he, and he focused on that at first. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that might have been part due to just tiredness. And, yeah. you know, well, that's probably a perfectionist as he is. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly, yeah. it didn't go so well. But he did six, six excellent things. He's mm -hmm. had six personal bests in, in each thing. And he beat his target at the score of 50 that he had, so he was pleased. So it was pretty much a party from that point on, wasn't it? Yeah. For the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. So you got loads of stuff at the store, mm -hmm. new leotards, <laughs> picture frames, mm -hmm. pretty much everything he wanted. Um, and we went for dinner and he got like a really cool drink. His big cocktail. We got a picture of it. We um, went to the movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the next the day we went to James Bond. Uh, Cadbury World. Sorry, Cadbury yeah. World. And got him uh, the world's biggest bar of chocolate, <laughs> and he seemed all right with that. And all was noticed when you buy Charlie big bars of chocolates, he's quite happy. So it was quite a good weekend. All it was all, a really it? fun weekend. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. For <laughs> and how has he been since that he's got back? More motivated, uh, less resistant, less hesitant to go. More keen to perfect things, practice, and more talking about it more positively. Yeah, you know, just got a real second wind and mm -hmm. interest in it again. So keep working hard, Charlie. Yep, well done, proud of you, son. Tremendous. <coughs> Charlie certainly made the most of his Saturday off in Birmingham, as he became Charlie in the chocolate factory with a trip to Cadbury's World. But as a true athlete, Charlie decided not to eat any chocolate, as he wanted to get back to Birmingham in 2016 and represent Scotland next year at Level 2. Thank you.